What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to do anomaly detection in Python with the anomaly detection toolkit short ADTK. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to do anomaly detection in Python today. And for this, we're going to use the anomaly detection toolkit short ADTK, which is a Python package that allows us to do unsupervised rule based time series anomaly detection, meaning anomaly detection on time series data, which follows a rule based approach, not a machine learning based approach. So we don't use a machine learning model to find anomalies, we use concrete rules, we apply those rules, and then we detect anomalies based on those rules. And the good thing about the ADTK is that it allows us to do that very easily. We don't have to implement any of these uh, detectors, techniques, methods ourselves. We can just use them here from the library. The library provides a comprehensive uh, collection of different uh, detectors. And when you go to the documentation, adtk.retadocs.io, you can scroll down here to the quick start section and you can see a basic example here. Training data is loaded, so or time series data is loaded using pandas. We validate the series then with ADTK. Then we plot the sequence or the series, and then we use a detector. In this case, they use the seasonal detector to find anomalies. And what detector you use depends on the use case, but anomaly detection in general can be very useful for a bunch of different tasks. So for example, uh, one thing that comes to mind is you might have a server, a lot of users are connecting to that server, and you keep track of some measure, uh, some metric that is related to user activity on a minute to minute basis, for example. And when you find an anomaly there, when you detect an anomaly, this might be a sign for an attack, or maybe you just get more traffic because someone mentioned you, but maybe you want to be notified when something unusual happens because it might uh, indicate an attack. And then you might want to set off an alarm and take certain measures. Uh, also in stock data, you might want to spot some anormal data, some anomalies uh, in price movements, maybe a lot of selling is going on, a lot of buying is going on, the volatility is very unusual, or the volume is very high, the volume is very low, something like that. This might also help to uh, inform, to make informed buying or selling decisions. So this is what we're going to talk about in this video, we're going to talk about this toolkit. And for this, we're going to have to use time series data, I'm going to use two different uh, data sets, one is going to be the temperature, global temperature time series data set here from data hub IO, you will find a link in the description down below. Uh, basically, you just have to download here this monthly data as a CSV file and store it in the directory that you're going to be working in. Um, and in addition to that, I'm also going to use stock data, um, maybe of multiple different companies. And for that, we're going to use uh, the Y finance library, which allows us to uh, access the Yahoo Finance API from Python. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up the command line and we want to type pip install ADTK, Y Finance, Pandas and Matplotlib. Those are going to be the libraries. Uh, those are the libraries that we're going to be using the advanced, not the advanced, the anomaly detection toolkit, the Y Finance uh, library, Pandas for loading the data set and Matplotlib for displaying the visualizations. So install these packages, and then we can get into the code. We're going to start with the imports, we're going to import pandas as PD, we're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, we're going to import Y finance as YF. And then we're going to import from ADTK dot data, the validate series function, then we're going to say from ADTK dot visualization, we're going to import the plot function. Um, and we're going to also say from ADTK dot detector. And in this case here, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to use a wildcard import. Uh, this is as always not a good practice. So you should always um, explicitly import things like threshold, AD, seasonal AD, quantile AD, and so on. But since we're going to use so many in this video today, I'm just going to use uh, this wildcard import here. So basically import everything. All right, so let's get started by loading the data set. First, I already have this temperature CSV data set here on the left in this directory. And we're going to start by saying the data is going to be PD <clears throat> read CSV temperature CSV. We can print that to see if that works. Um, and what's important here is we need to have a certain structure, we need to have one feature and we need to have the date, a date time um, instance as the index. So in this case, we have 
uh, just a basic index from 0 to 3287. Uh, we need to drop the source column, we need to, to uh, make the date column the index, and we need to keep the mean column. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say data equals data dot set index <clears throat> date, and then data equals data mean, like this. And this results in this series object here. So we're not going to care about the values themselves too much because what this basically is here is Celsius, but the difference from a base. So we have data about temperature, but it's always in relation to some other temperature that was measured at a certain point in time. So this is not Celsius um, as an absolute temperature here. So we don't have 30 degrees Celsius. We have the difference from a certain base value. However, we're still going to use that data here for anomaly detection. And we're going to start with a very basic anomaly detection first which is going to be the threshold detection. So the threshold detection is quite simple. We just provide manually a threshold, a minimum and a maximum, a high and a low, uh, or a low and high, um, where we say, okay, if it's below that value, it's an anomaly. If it's above that value, it's an anomaly. Um, and then we just define anomalies like that, or we detect anomalies like that. This is very simple. We can do that the following way. We just say threshold detector is going to be equal to threshold AD, low equals, uh, for example, for this data set, it makes sense to use something like negative 0.5. And a high is 0.75, for example, then in order to get the anomalies, we say anomalies equals threshold detector dot detect. And then we use the data here. Uh, and then we can plot this very easily. Now, keep in mind, this plot function is not math.lib.plot, it's ADTK visualization.plot. So we're going to plot here now the data, we're going to set anomaly equal to anomalies, we're going to say anomaly color <clears throat> equals red. And we're going to say anomaly tag is going to be marker. And then we just say PLT show to display the actual results. And that is a very basic anomaly detection. We just define uh, what's the problem here. Index of the input time series must be a pandas daytime index object. I think the problem is that it is not by default. Maybe it's a string. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say data date is equal to PD to daytime data date. That should fix the problem. And it does. So here you can see now how this works. Our low is here at negative 0.5. Our high is here at uh, 0 0.75. And everything above that high or below that low is considered to be an anomaly. Uh, that's quite simple. There's not much, much intelligence involved here. Uh, we can do something similar with quantas. So instead of providing absolute values, uh, we can provide uh, quantas. So we can say, if it's in the 99th percentile, or if it's uh, in the uh, 0 0.01 percentile, we can say it's an anomaly. And we do that by saying it's a quantile AD. And instead of providing high and low, or actually we do still provide high and low, but we provide them as quantas. So 0 0.01, or high is going to be 0 0.99. And we can change the name here also to uh, quantile detector. There you go. Let's run this here. And in this case, model must be trained first. Yeah, if we use the quantile uh, detection, we need to say fit detect because we need to train it first on the data. And in this case, we can see here, all these values are in the 99th percentile, all these values here are in the in the first percentile. And those are considered to be anomalies. This is another method that we can use. Uh, one more method that we can use is we can use the interquartile range anomaly detection, basically meaning we have this uh, interquartile range IQR. Uh, and we can use a multiplier to say, okay, we allow for that many ranges until we consider something an anomaly. So that much deviation from the mean is allowed. And other than that, all of the other values are considered anomalies. So we can say here, IQR detector, 
is equal to interquartile range AD. And here we don't provide low and high, we just provide C, which means 1.5 IQRs are allowed. The higher we set that number, um, the less anomalies we're going to find. So in this case here, we find only those. If I set this number to one, we should find more because we only allow for one IQR. There you go, we find more of them. If I set this to two, we're going to find less. That's the idea behind this one. Um, also, we can use a so-called generalized extreme studentized deviate uh, test, which is ESD. I don't know exactly how it works, don't ask me, but basically what you need to know about this detector is uh, it assumes a normal distribution. So you should only use this detector if the data actually is normally distributed or at least if the assumption that the data is normally distributed makes sense. Um, so let me just reverse this here. We're going to say ESD detector. And we're going to say here generalized ESD test AD. And what we provide here is a parameter alpha. Let's set it, for example, to 0 0.3. And as I said, this is assuming that the data is normally distributed. And if it's not, um, what's the problem here now? Oh, I think I know what the problem could be. We didn't validate the data. So I think if we say data equals validate series data, this should solve the problem. There you go. Okay, that was the issue. Um, in this case, we don't find any anomalies. Maybe it's because, uh, by the way, I duplicated the code here. Let's run this again. Uh, maybe it's because just the data is not normalized. Maybe the alpha parameter needs to be adjusted. But since this data is not normally distributed anyways, uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to use this detector here. I just wanted to show it to you guys. So if you have some data that is normally distributed, this might make sense uh, to find anomaly detection. Um, one thing that's very interesting, especially for stock prices is the persist anomaly detection. So now we're going to proceed by using um, by using stock data. So I'm going to comment this out and we're going to say data equals Y finance, uh, actually not Y finance, YF dot download. We're going to download, for example, the Tesla stock price and we're going to just pick the close column. We're going to then validate it. Um, first of all, let's see if it works. There you go. So now we have the Tesla stock price. Uh, and this persist, uh, what is it called exactly? This persist anomaly detection basically uh, compares each value to the previous one and it detects positive or negative changes that are anormal. Uh, that's the basic idea behind that. So we can say here persist detector is going to be equal to persist AD. We can set again some tolerance here or some sensitivity 3.0. And we also just define here the site. Are we interested in positive or negative movements that we want to detect? Um, the anomalies again are anomalies are computed by saying persist detector dot fit detect on the data. And then we want to again plot the data, plot the anomaly. We're going to then again say anomaly color, red and anomaly what did we have before anomaly tech equals marker <clears throat> PLT show. This basically shows us where we have some unusual positive price movements. In this case, we have quite many. <clears throat> Let's maybe adjust this parameter here to find less. Still finds a lot. Maybe if I change this to 10. Uh, yeah, now it finds a little bit less. Maybe let's change this to 20. Let's see when we get only a few of them to get the essence. Yeah, here you can see maybe here we have a lot of uh, price movement. Here we have a lot of price movement. Now for this one, actually, it might make... Uh, let me just see if we... If I can change the way this is plotted by saying TS line width equals 1. TS marker size equals three. Maybe this changes the way this is displayed because as far as I remember, it was actually, 
Let me just look up in a documentation as far as I remember when we go to the examples here. To the persist. Yeah, actually, it was displayed like this. So maybe we need to. Let me just copy this here. We do fit detect. <clears throat> we do the plotting. But I think actually I should have done this correctly. So I'm not sure if this is going to change much. There you go. Now we get what's the difference. Actually, let me just see that here. Maybe it's because of the marker. Maybe we shouldn't have the marker here. Let me just see if that's the difference. Should be a difference, I guess. Yeah, there you go. So here you can see now where we have some anomalies. Same can be done for uh, the negative side. So we can change this here to negative. And then we can plot it again. And this can be quite useful again, as I said, to spot some uh, unusual movements. Now it seems to detect way too much. So maybe we can adjust this parameter so that we find less and less. Um, yeah, so here, for example, we can see this is an unusual movement. This is an unusual movement. This is an unusual movement. Maybe I can even zoom into those. There you go. So this is definitely unusual. Uh, this is unusual. I would also say this is unusual. Uh, but the thing is, it only recognizes here um, one day movements because the window, the time window of this persist um, detector is one by default. We can change that by saying here persist detector dot eight uh, dot, dot window, sorry, equals and then we can set 10 days, for example, then it's going to look back 10 days. Um, and then we can see uh, actually nothing. Maybe we should be less sensitive here. Or more sensitive uh, sensitive here. Okay, this is too sensitive. Let me just change that here to 20. You can play around with that, right? You can intuitively see what makes sense and what not. Let me zoom in here. Yeah, I mean, we do get more results here. Uh, you have to play around with that. But the basic idea is you adjust the sensitivity here, the higher the number you set uh, C to the less detection, uh, the, the less anomalies you will detect and the lower you set it, the more anomalies you will detect. And um, for the window, you can adjust how many days to look back. That's the basic idea here. Now, last but not least, what I want to show you here is something that we probably won't see in the Tesla stock price, I guess, at least maybe we will. Uh, we can do some volatility detection here as well. So this is the volatility shift anomaly detection. We can just say volatility underscore detector is equal to volatility shift AD. We can set C to six, we can set the side to positive, and we can set the window to 30 instances, then the anomalies anomalies are again going to be volatility detector dot fit detect data plot data anomaly equals anomalies anomaly color equals red. And then we can say PLT show. So the basic, basic idea here is that we um, detect shifts in volatility, actually, we do get some results here. So let's see. Uh, what happens here, let's maybe zoom into this here. Uh, it seems to be the case that at least the detector says so that the volatility here seems to be a normal compared to what we otherwise have. Maybe if I again increase this to something like 20, we will get less noise or less anomalies detected here. Uh, okay, this was too much, maybe to 10. Yeah, this looks better. So let's maybe look into this here. Uh, I don't know exactly why it says that here we have so much more volatility than usual. Um, but again, I don't think that this stock price necessarily is is too is too good of an example here. Uh, it also says here that we have more uh, more volume, uh, not volume volatility than usual. 
Uh, but yeah, I, I think this is this can be seen better in the documentation example. Where was it? There was this example here. You can see it quite clearly. Uh, we have this data that's not too volatile and then all of a sudden we get this volatility here and here it detects this volatility shift. Um, and yeah, the Tesla stock price, maybe because it's right before a volatility shift. So this here is not the volatility itself, but what you see is uh, what you see here is the volatility. So this is the shift point, we could say maybe that's how it works. Uh, but this is also quite useful to spot shifts in volatility. So maybe if you looking at a uh, stock price, and you see something like this, it detects already a volatility shift, and then you see uh, way more volatility. And this can be interesting for the prediction of stock prices. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.